Okay, so today we're going to solve rational equations again, but we're going to do it this time with denominators that do need to be factored um, in order to make your problem easier. Other than that additional extra step of factoring, these problems really are not any more complicated than what we did yesterday. So um, looking at my denominators, uh, x minus 2, I can't do anything with that. Remember that this counts as one of our fractions too, but that's just over 1. And then here we have x squared minus 4. That can be factored. That's difference of squares. So I want to instead think of that as x plus 2 times x minus 2. And so when I'm thinking about what I want my denominator or my least common denominator to be, well, I see that I've got x minus 2. Um, and since I've already accounted for the x minus 2, I don't have to write that again. I also see in my denominators I have an x plus 2 somewhere, so I need to include that. And then the 1 multiplying by 1 is not going to change anything. So my least common denominator, my lowest common denominator here is x minus 2 times x plus 2. So I'm going to multiply every term by both of those things. Um, just on the top, again, because we are equal to something, as long as we do it on both sides, we're okay. So we don't have to multiply by the top and the bottom. We're just multiplying on top so that our denominators hopefully will cancel out and we won't have any fractions anymore. So my first term, I've got 2 times x minus 2 and x plus 2 over x minus 2. And we see those x minus 2s are going to cancel. My next term, I've got 5x times x minus 2 and x plus 2. And I see on the bottom, x plus 2 and x minus 2, those are going to cancel. And then I've got this equal to 1 times x minus 2, x plus 2, and there's nothing on the bottom. Okay, so let's clean this up. Um, I've got 2 times x plus 2 plus 5x equals, and I can don't really need to worry about that 1 there, but I can go ahead and FOIL over here, and I already know what that's going to give me because I factored it before. I know that's going to give me x squared minus 4. I can distribute this 2 here. So I've got 2x plus 4 plus 5x equals x squared minus 4. 7x plus 4 equals x squared minus 4, and I've got an x squared and an x, so I'm going to have to factor. Um, so I'm going to move everything to one side. And I'm going to get x squared minus 7x, those are not like terms, and then minus 8. You can factor, you can use the quadratic formula, if you need to do the whole AC method, that's fine. If you can do it in your head, that's even better. That's what it factors to. So my two possible answers are 8 and negative 1. Opposite signs, right? Because that's what we would have to plug in to make it be 0. Now, remember, we can have extraneous solutions, so we need to check to make sure that these are real. We can go to the Desmos graph. And I do, in fact, see answers at negative 1 and 8. So these are both real. Okay, let's do another one. Again, I do see a denominator that I can factor. Oops. So this factors to, hopefully, x minus 3 and x minus 4. I mean, looking at this problem, wouldn't it be great if that's what it factored to? That does work. So I'm going to think of that as the factored form instead. And so if I look at all my denominators, I see x minus 3, and I see x minus 4, and that's it. So that's going to be my least common denominator, my LCD. So now I'm going to multiply every numerator by both of those things. And this one, it's going to cancel my whole denominator, leave me with just 5. Um, here, multiply by x minus 3, x minus 4. The x minus 3s are going to cancel. 
And here, x minus 3, x minus 4, the x minus 4s are going to cancel. Okay, distribute. 5 equals 2x minus 8 plus 5x minus 15. And just continue to solve for x. Okay, so we got a possible answer of 4. So let's check our graph and see if they cross at 4. All right, well, it looks like both of these are approaching 4, and it's really hard to tell if they cross. I don't think they do. Um, we can check in the table if it's really hard to see on the graph. So let's check 4 in this one. Okay, that one definitely doesn't touch 4, um, which means they can't cross at 4, but we can still check the other one as well. It looks like, yep, 4 is an asymptote. So 4 is not an answer. Did we really have to check the graph to know that? No, we didn't because 4 could not have been an answer. Let's go back to the original problem here. 4 could not have been an answer because if I plug 4 in here, 4 minus 4 would give me 0. I can't divide by 0. So 4 could not have been a solution. And since that's the only solution that I got, that means this has no real solutions. That is extraneous. No real solutions. So why did we get 4? Well, we modified this problem from the very beginning to get rid of our denominators, right? We multiplied by something on each side, the LCD, to get rid of our denominators. So it allowed for an answer of 4. But we really couldn't have an answer of 4 when this was still a fraction because it would have made us divide by 0. And had we gotten 3 as an answer, 3 also would not have been allowed because 3 minus 3 would give me 0 in a denominator. So that's how you end up with extraneous solutions with a rational. Let's try another one. All right, this one's nice. Um, looking at my denominators, the only thing that I can factor is the third one there just by taking out a GCF. So I can rewrite that as x times x minus 3. So if I look at all my denominators, I see x. I do not need to multiply by x three times. Once is enough. If something repeats, you just need to count it once. And I see x minus 3. Oops, it's not the tool I wanted. x minus 3. So I need to multiply by that as well. So I'm going to multiply each term by both of those things. So that first one, I'm going to have x times x minus 3 times x plus 2 over x. The x's are going to cancel. Second one, I'm going to have x times x minus 3. Again, that's my LCD. And again, the x's are going to cancel. And then the last one. I've got x times x minus 3 times 4x plus 2 over x times x minus 3. And here are the x's and the x minus 3 is going to cancel. I've got some work to do. I've got some foiling to do. If I foil here and then combine like terms, I'm going to get x squared plus 2x minus 3x, so minus 1x minus 6. And here I'm going to get x squared minus 1x minus 3x, so minus 4x plus 3. And then big important here, I'm going to be subtracting 4x plus 2. So I need to subtract the 4x and I need to subtract the 2. So that's going to be... minus 4x and minus 2. 
but all my denominators are gone because they canceled. So great, we don't have to deal with a fraction anymore. Let's just get all my like terms together. Um, all right, let's start with just combining the stuff on the right side. Squared minus eight X plus one. Okay, get my X squareds together or they end up canceling. I'm going to add this 8x. I'm going to add space here, but I've got 7x minus 6 equals 1. Add 6. 7x equals 7. So I get x equals 1. Now, looking at my original equation, the only things that x couldn't have been, because they would give me an undefined denominator, um, I couldn't have zero because I can't divide by zero and I couldn't have three because three minus three would give me zero. I got one. So as long as I didn't make a mistake, that should be a real answer. But I can check Desmos to make sure. And in fact, I do see an intersection when X is one. Okay, let's do one more. Uh, can't factor that, can't factor that, but I can factor this. And wouldn't it be nice if it factored to be x plus 2 times x minus 4? Let's see if that would work. x times x would give me x squared. Minus 4x plus 2x is minus 2x. And minus 8, it works. That's great. Because now that means all I've got to worry about with my LCD is make sure that everything gets multiplied by x plus 2 and make sure that everything gets multiplied by x minus 4. Okay, so let's do that. So I've got 2x times x plus 2 and x minus 4 over x plus 2. I've got 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 4 over x minus 4, and I've got 3 times x plus 2, x minus 4, over x plus 2, x minus 4. So let's see what I can cancel. Got x plus 2s, x minus 4s, x plus 2s, and x minus 4s. Okay, this makes this pretty simple. Now I've just got to distribute this 2x. Distribute this 2, and it's plus, so I don't have to worry about changing any signs. And then on the left, all I've got left, or on the right, all I've got left is 3x. 2x squared minus 6x plus 4 equals 3x. Okay, get everything to one side. 2x squared minus 9x plus 4 equals 0. Okay, AC method, A times C, 2 times 4 is 8, we need to multiply to 8, but add up to negative 9, so I've got to split this into negative 1x and negative 8x, okay, greatest common factor, x, 2x minus 1, greatest common factor here then is going to have to be a negative 4. So I get x minus 4 times 2x minus 1 equals 0. Here x would have to be 4. Here x would have to be 1 half. Okay, looking at my original equation, I know 4 doesn't work because 4 minus 4 would give me 0. 1 half should be fine. It's just negative 2 and 4 that I couldn't have had. But I better check the graph just to make sure that 1 half works. And it does. So the only real answer here is 1 half. Negative 4 is extraneous.